Adductor magnus muscle is also one of the medial compartment muscle of the thigh. It is largest and deepest of all the muscles in the medial compartment. As you can see, this is the largest of all the muscles compared to other muscles in the medial compartment. And also, it is the deepest of all the muscles in the medial compartment. Like adductor longus or adductor brevis muscle, this muscle is also triangular or fan shaped muscle. The apex of it is attached to the hip bone and the extended base is attached to the femur bone. This muscle is divided into two parts. The lateral part often called the adductor part and the medial part often called the hamstring part. So adductor magnus muscle has two parts, the adductor part and the hamstring part. First we will discuss the origin. The adductor part of adductor magnus muscle originate from ischiopubic ramus of the hip bone. Now this marked pink area is the origin point of the adductor part of adductor magnus muscle not this red one. The red one is the origin point of hamstring part. This is isolated hip bone with the interior view. The highlighted green is the pubic part. We divide the pubic bone into three parts. The body, the superior ramus and the inferior ramus. This highlighted green is the ischium part. And on the ischium bone inferiorly is present the inferior ramus. And the inferior ramus of the pubic bone together with the inferior ramus of the ischium form ischiopubic ramus. And from the ischiopubic ramus originate the adductor part of the adductor magnus muscle. Next is the hamstring part. The hamstring part originate from ischial tuberosity of the ischium bone. Again, this is isolated hip bone with the interior view. In the lateral view, this is the ischium bone. And this highlighted blue is the ischial tuberosity. From where the hamstring part of the adductor magnus muscle originate. Now just keep in the back of your head that all the hamstring muscles originate from the ischial tuberosity. This will help you in memorizing its origin. We will further discuss this in the video on hamstring muscles. Now note that the fibers of the adductor part originate from the medial side which is the ischiopubic ramus and then get to the lateral side. While the fibers of the hamstring part originate from the lateral side that is the ischial tuberosity and then descend down medially. After origination, it expands as it descends downward and laterally and become a triangular shape muscle. This large circular gap inferiorly between the hamstring part and the adductor part of the adductor magnus muscle is called the adductor hiatus. This adductor hiatus allow femoral artery and associated vein 
to pass between the adductor canal on the anterior medial aspect of the thigh and the popliteal fossa posterior to the knee. This is the adductor canal which contains femoral artery and its associated veins. Now this adductor canal end inferiorly at the adductor hiatus and the adductor hiatus is connected posteriorly to the popliteal fossa. This is the popliteal fossa which is present posterior to the knee joint. This is the posterior view of the lower limb. Here you can see the femoral artery coming out of the adductor hiatus and entering the popliteal fossa. This is another image showing the femoral artery and the femoral vein passing through the adductor canal and via the adductor hiatus get to the posterior side of the knee joint which is the popliteal fossa. So structures passes between the adductor canal and the popliteal fossa through the adductor hiatus. Also notice these perforations in the adductor magnus muscle near its insertion. These perforations could be 3 to 4 in numbers and they allow perforating branches of the deep femoral artery to pass from anterior to posterior side of the thigh. This is the femoral artery. From it arises the deep femoral artery. And from the deep femoral artery arises these perforating femoral arteries. They are called perforating arteries because they perforate the adductor magnus muscle. The terminal branch of the perforating artery passes through the most inferior perforation in the adductor magnus muscle. Next is the insertion. The adductor part is inserted on the posterior surface of the proximal femur, linea aspera and the medial supracondylar line. Also notice that the insertion of the adductor part is in the form of segments. There are present these gaps which is actually these perforations that we just discussed. This is isolated femur bone with the interior view. Now in the posterior view, this is the proximal femur bone, this is the distal femur bone and this is the middle one third of the femur bone where the linea aspera is present. In the distal femur bone, this is the lateral supracondylar line. And this is the medial supracondylar line. And the adductor part of the adductor magnus muscle is inserted on the posterior surface of the proximal femur, linea aspera, and the medial supracondylar line. Next is the hamstring part. And it is inserted on the adductor tubercle and the supracondylar line of the femur bone. Again, this is isolated femur bone with the interior view. This is the distal part of the femur bone. And on the medial side, this is the adductor tubercle. And this is the medial supracondylar line where the hamstring part of the adductor magnus muscle is inserted. Next is the innervation. Adductor magnus muscle has two innervations. The adductor part is innervated by obturator nerve, while the hamstring part is innervated by tibial division of the sciatic nerve. And both of these parts 
his contribution from L2, L3 and minor contribution from L4 spinal nerve roots. Next is the function. Adductor magnus muscle only crosses the hip joint and its main action on the hip joint is adduction of the thigh and it makes sense since this muscle is present medial to the hip joint so contraction of this muscle will pull the thigh in this direction the name of adductor magnus muscle also suggest its action adductor magnus muscle adduct the thigh this muscle also help in the medial rotation of the thigh but this is the minor function of this muscle and mainly the adductor part is responsible for the medial rotation these two actions of the adductor magnus muscle are similar to the adductor brevis and adductor longus muscle next i will discuss obturator externus muscle thank you